Inside this community stands a group of frontline defenders who are shadowed by a story of adversity. In one week, 24 lives of young guys were lost. The defenders are now living in desperation. Karawa likam hapa kwa mlango, akantolea chuma, akanonesha kijana. Hii story wachana nayo, ama tutakusosi. Some of their families have been killed. The voices of the community have been silenced. The reporter's notebook has been left empty with blank pages. I've been on gunpoint uh, from police and the youth more than 10 times. What is left is the only man of God putting out his neck to bury the dead. When it comes to ghetto, the police officer is the one to decide whether you are a criminal or not, and is the one to decide whether you live or not. This is a story of community frontline defenders. In Nairobi's sprawling slums, this is the voice of the people. It's better to be late than to be called the late. One that many slum dwellers relate to well. Their communication is mostly slang, famously known as Sheng in the streets of Nairobi. And you criminals in uniform, wale police mnafanya crime na mevoa uniform. Kitu mina ta kuambia tu ni moja. We have any victim in blue uniform, kama vile ule youth ni victim in blue jeans. And a victim and a victim should not fight, but we should all champion a common cause that will progress Kenya forward. Each one teach one. This is Ghetto Radio, a community radio station. Saturday morning show known as Changamka. Edgar Ogutu, famously known as Liberator, is among the pioneers of Sheng News in Kenya, and for almost a decade, he has been the voice of social justice movement in this community. We had the CEO of Milimani Court in the studio, and another, uh, another guy from uh, Court Users Committee. And uh, after, immediately after the show, uh, we were arrested in front of uh, the OCS of Central. Uh, uh, reasons for arrest, we never knew arrested uh, together with uh, my colleague Garang. In fact, uh, the police uh, went with Garang. The agitation the show produces has led to most of them being muzzled for doing their work. Uh, I was attacked in my home and all my important equipment, camera, uh, uh, voice recorders, two my laptop with the very sensitive information in regard to the, the, all this information I'm giving was stolen by known people, people that I don't know. So that's, a, that's an indication. And it is not once that uh, we have been in confrontation with, uh, with the, uh, mostly state actors, I'll not say police, because uh, police are always used. They are always, uh, police are always uh, errand, errands for some people who are doing cover up. And that's why I always, uh, def this is the way I define police. Uh. Political oppression leaves innocent civilians exposed. Uh, so me, police, I just want to remind them, you're just a victim in blue uniform, just like I'm a victim in blue jeans. This is the work that has led to subjection and intimidation of journalists and activists who document police brutality uh, and extrajudicial killings here in the slums. So uh, you're coming here to miss reporters and do this and this. Because I was there to unmath what is this Gaza, who is behind Gaza, who is financing Gaza, where do they get their support, who is manipulating the boys of Kayole in the name of Gaza. So we did the stories and uh, that was the most risky uh, reporting work that I've ever done in my life. Because uh, for like uh, I've, been, I've been on gunpoint uh, from police and the youths more than 10 times. Dalalishwachini. Before they know you're a journalist, you're already down. Gwanja, eh, yeah. Gaza. Mm -hmm. Gwanja ali, ali kuja mpaka getu radio. Nakumbuka. Akaniambia Alan Mimi, ebu ni chukwe ni peleka ata police station ya Kayole. 
Mm. I can confess I talked to one OCS and I talked to at that time. Gambia mm. organize. Mwendo mwenge nao kijana. Baraza niambia mimi tusi tukufika nao mtu hapo ni risasi au tacheza na yeye. Kagwenja disappeared. Baka saa hii. Hadi you can confirm me mimi si mwana. Mm. So kwa crime trouble ni shunoma na lazima tukue na kitu tunawapatia watu na venye tunakaa nao kwanza. But now the disquiet and apprehension for this community is brought by cops who are dreaded and revered in equal measure. On March 31st, 2017, in Isli area, here in Nairobi, Corporal Ahmed Rashid was captured on cameras shooting two unarmed men. The video that went viral on social media shows the police officer pumping bullets into the young boy, then got another gun from his colleague and sprayed an additional four bullets on the helpless man who was already on the ground. Rashid, the epitome of impunity. Someone caught on live. Uh, video shooting, nothing happened. He has continued killing. It's so sad in a country because you live in a slum. That helpless man was a father and a husband. Years later, the widow of the man who was killed that day still lives in fear and in hiding from the police officer. Anita, which is not her real name, tells us that months after this killing, she got married again and later. She found her husband's body in the mortuary. Nikaenda city mortuary. Nikasema nikasema venye alikuwa amevaa. Na yeye ni kweli nikatolea nikatolea mwili wake. Mimi ni mwana. The mother of two, who has been widowed twice, says that till now she can't explain to her son where the father is. A distraught mother and widow now says her life is in danger and it is hard for her to make ends meet. Susan Wamboi, a young human rights monitor, goes through photos of her late husband, Christopher Maina, famously known as Maich. In 2017, police officers drawn from the local police station took her husband at the time. Wamboi was nine months pregnant. <laughs> lakini je wakati wako wa mwisho umefika Maisha alijaribu kumwambia bibi yangu amebakisha wiki mbili ajifungue so unipe tu chance hadi kana nimekosa unipeleke polisi at least nikae polisi nione mtoto wangu askari akusikia alimpiga tu marisasi na Maisha kaishi hapo Maina's mother went to Pangani police to demand why the officers killed her son. Wakapata madhi wamesumama hapo kwa gate, wakatoa marisasi kwa mfuko, wakazimwaga chini. Wakasema hizi risasi si za kuwa ngombe, hizi tutaua mtu nazo, aende akapatikane katikati ya mpaka na Tanzania. Madhi kusikia hivyo wakatoroka polisi, wakaachana tu na hiyo maneno. Just last year on June 30th, 2020, Corporal Ahmed Rashid and other officers came to Madare Social Justice Center. According to a press release seen by an inside source, Rashid demanded to see the leadership of Madare Justice Center and also emphasized more than three times to be served tea by Lucy Wamboi. 
They further quote that Maich, Lucy's husband, was killed in 2017 by Rashid and a witness to Maich's killing was also killed by Rashid in 2018. The memories and threats still trouble young Wamboi. <laughs> Please <laughs> The pain and cries of the slum dwellers is evident. Majengo area in Kamkunji, Nairobi, a young man is writhing in pain after being shot by police in a demonstration. Angry residents here are demanding the arrest of police officers after the killing of one of their own, Ahmed Majid. Majid was killed after an argument with police over the arrest of another man. Atmani Saidi is the lead human rights defender here in Majengo. Just recently, he documented this. In his table is the police bullet cartridge that he says was used that day. They would later send it to the Independent Policing Oversight Authority. <laughs> wale wa mauliwa na karao hii area mwaka ikiisha zaidi ya vijana 15 na unfortunately na kwa gani mayut vijana ni masnacha hawatumi chuma kuiba we don't talk about data we talk about people so i don't like saying 100 people those are akina karanja why are you arresting me why well, give me a reason i protest because you're killing us you police! 7th July 2020, a day marked in Kenya to commemorate July 7th, 1990, when violent protests broke out in Kenya to demand free elections. <laughs> Activists in Kenya staged protests against police brutality in Kenya. Athmani Said would be arrested and locked at Central Police Station in Nairobi. In an exclusive interview, Athmani says his life is in danger. Karawa likam hapa kwa mlango, akantolea chuma, akanonesha kijana. Hii story wachana nayo, ama tutakusosi. Manzesikio nilingia woye, nikashindwa kutia kudu, nikapigia makomre disimu. Yani ushona yani ile, mbaka kwenda omi kakwa nishida. Kwa sababu sasa naona nikienda omi family, sinda kwa naingiza kwa noma juu. Ikiwa mtu aneza nikuta hapa, si obvia sana juu omi alinatoka. Fear, threats, and anxiety. Has made some of the defenders of the community to be abandoned. Kennedy Chindi, famously known as JJ, a human rights defender, tells us that the death of their comrade Caroline Mwatha really changed the narrative of human rights. Killer cops started to look after me. And they issued threats. I can remember very well, well, it was last year, October. October. There was a spate of killings in Dandora, Madare, and Kamukunji. In one week, 24 lives of young guys 
were lost. I was the one who was uh, documenting them in Madare. Carol Mwada, the late, may her soul rest in peace. She was documenting in Dandora. And Babs was documenting in Kamukunji. So we were all of us threatened. I had to escape, go into hiding. Babs also went into hiding. But Carol, because she's a lady, she remained. Carol, uh, first of all, disappeared. We all were called into a place of calm and just trying to reflect what is the space that we are in. Uh, her death really hit us really hard. Uh, then the reality of she also left kids. So you, you, as a woman, you go back you go back home, you meet your kids, and you're like, one day I might go out and I might never come back. That where enshrined is the constitution. I refuse to bow. I refuse. I refuse to bow, and I'm not afraid. I'm ready to fight for justice. Among the top arrests of the Saba Saba protests is the convener of social justice movements, Wilfred Olal. An emotional Olal tells us that life in the ghetto is getting worse as poor Kenyans continue living in the shadows of despair. When it comes to ghetto, the police officer is the one to decide whether you are a criminal or not, and is the one to decide whether you will live or not. But when it comes to the other areas, you are arrested, taken to court. Then why do we have courts? You can do away with them and deal with the jungle law. And the bigger criminals who steal billions of shillings, what happened to them? The, the criminals who steal the future of young people of this country, what happens to them? They are elected into office. So when you're talking about criminals, let's have one law. If it's killing, kill everyone. If it's taking to court, take everyone to court. Don't have two sets of laws for two sets of people. In an environment where death is no longer a shocking occurrence, very few men of the cloth are willing to preside over the deaths of the executed. Why are you killing them? We meet up with Pastor Edwin Mungai, a former gang member who terrorized the streets of Nairobi turned man of God. He is among the few clerics putting out his neck to bury the victims of police brutality. Hii jina inafika mpaka mahali ninaikata. Hii jina ya pasta. Maana mapasta wengi wameshachoma hii picha ya hii jina. Na ikafika mpaka mahali mimi nikawa nasema nataka niitwe niitwe tu mtumishi, a servant. Mtumishi ni wa kutumikia watu. Maana ili jina pasta limeshachomewa picha. Na wachungaji wengi hawawezi kubali kuzikana kama hawalipwi. Na maandiko inanifundisha mimi ya kwamba tulipati wabure na sisi tunafaa kutoa wabure. So mimi hata waizi wengi wananipenda mimi hata majority matanga mingi ni mimi wamekuwa kiita matanga muizi ya kiwawa mimi wanaitwa kwa ile matanga wananita kwa ile matanga ni hubiri kwa ile matanga na pia nichangishe. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu pia na wao wanaogopa hao mapastors. Maana mchungaji kama sahii akiokoka anajiona yeye ni special sana. Afai kutengamana no easy. From the teenage mother who has lost two husbands to police bullets to the frontline defenders of the community, the story of documenting and putting faces to the data continues being the biggest dilemma to a community living in fear of the state.